ओके पॉजिटिव डिस्प्लेसमेंट पम्प आई ऑलरेडी सेट देर इज सिंप्लेक्स डिप्लेक्स मेनी प्लेक्सेस आर देर ओके सो सिंप्लेक्स पम्प ऑल्सो पॉजिटिव डिसप्लेसमेंट पम्प दिस इज सिंपलेस्ट वन सो फर्स्ट आई ड्रॉ द सिंप्लेक्स पम्प हाउ डज इट वर्क यू कैन रिमेम्बर द सकर पम्प सेम वे एक्चुअली ओके सकर पम्प नॉर्मली वी यूज इन वर्टिकल डायरेक्शन बट इन दिस केस योर ट्रिप्लेक्स एंड अदर पम्प नॉर्मली इट विल बी हॉर्जेंटल पम्प ओके सो आई एम ड्रॉइंग वन हॉर्जेंटल पिस्टन ओके हॉर्जेंटल पिस्टन पम्प हेयर माई हेयर इज माई पिस्टन ओके हेयर इज माई पिस्टन एंड देर विल बी टू वाल्वस एक्चुअली ओके सो वैन पिस्टन इज मूविंग इन दिस डायरेक्शन दिस इज प्लांजर और पिस्टन प्लांजर और पिस्टन ओके समॉन से पिस्टन समॉन से प्लांजर now this is piston rod okay uh, this is valve 1 v1 this is v2 two valves are there and this end is called tdc or top dead center so, so this end will be bdc okay B, D, C, or bottom dead center. Okay. Now, if I draw PV diagram, so normally it will be taking fluid, then it will try to pressurize, deliver, and suction. Okay. So volume and flow rate. So I kept some portion not touching. You see this one. Okay. so what happens this is called indicated diagram okay ideally ideally is indicated diagram that means i am assuming there is no losses is there uh, during 1 1 2 3 four 1 to 2 suction stroke piston or plunger is moving 1 to 2 or top dead center to bottom dead center okay 1 to 2 suction stroke when suction stroke is there what will happen one valve must be closed another valve must valve must be open so v when it is sucking uh uh suction valve v1 open v1 open v2 closed Okay, then two to three. When two to three is there, it is pressurizing. Okay, so that time valve opening closing will happen. Then two to three. Uh, only piston changing direction. Okay, piston is trying to move pressurize. So piston changing direction. so the changing direction means the valve will be opening and closing okay and 3 to 4 3 to 4 what is happening you are delivering fluid at high pressure okay uh, not q this is big pressure so 3 to 4 uh, you are delivering fluid suction stroke delivery stroke okay like you can guess sucker or pump suction and piston moving down actually that time you are delivering uh, in uh, sucker rod pump you are uh, moving up is suction is happening delivery also happening when going down uh, plunger is getting fluid and fluid column is going up okay so here 3 to 4 fluid is delivered so that time v1 closed v2 open okay uh, when it is this direction going fluid is moving uh, out so this way fluid will move out this way fluid is in right so so both valve will not be opening together one will be closing one will be opening okay 3 to 4 and 4 to 1 again piston reach top dead center again moving back okay so piston changing direction again changing direction 
okay this is one simple uh, simplex pump okay now uh, simplex pump what is uh, happening it is giving one stroke fluid delivery no delivery no delivery means it is sucking fluid again delivering that means it is happening like this if i see time and pressure so initially suction suction is low pressure delivering high pressure suction happening delivering happening so this way it is giving pressure or uh, then this pressure actually if you are giving like pulse pressure it will be giving alternating stress to your piping system so you cannot uh, pump this fluid to your uh, hydraulic jet pump system so you have to give smooth flow so people tried to design a double acting pump okay this is single acting pump this is called single acting okay and double acting how does it work this, this is single acting done now double acting double acting is like this i have piston okay now v1 here v2 here v3 here v4 here okay i have four valves in double acting okay this is single acting okay in double acting i will have four valves it's mechanism almost similar what is happening when piston moving back so that time actually you are not delivering in single stroke but in double stroke you are delivering there also what is, uh, what is happening let's say first moving forward you see uh, cavity one c1 c2 i put c1 c2 cavity piston uh, same way i will draw no? okay so c1 uh, taking fluid delivering fluid and you are del uh, you are getting a pressure pulse like this okay now what is happening the c2 c2 cavity also is used as a pump uh, then how it will work when piston moving uh, towards v1 v2 or tdc bdc from bdc to dc piston moving so that time it is sucking so v1 so for c2 uh, piston moves uh, b d c to uh, t d c what is happening uh, one valve will be open will be cold let's say c2 open c uh, c2 op uh, sorry not v v3 v3 open and v4 close okay uh, and one more thing will happen okay just assume this v3 open with v4 closed so v3 open means it is suction stroke okay bdc to dc suction stroke okay uh, now uh, again what is happening piston moving t d c to b d c delivery stroke delivery stroke uh, delivery stroke what is happening v3 close v4 open okay so one valve will be acting as the inlet another valve will be as the outlet okay so one time one valve assisting in flow another time uh, an other valve is uh, assisting in outflow okay so now the double acting piston is piston moving tdc to bdc one piston uh, one cavity so c2 delivering again moving bdc to DC, tdc c1 delivering so both time you are getting delivery so let's say now my uh, that pressure curve if you see with time it is becoming like this okay that means i am getting pressure pulse like this previously my pressure pulse was pressure no pressure pressure no pressure now i am getting pressure no pressure pressure no pressure so pulses got reduced in double acting okay now duplex pump how does it work now duplex pump now duplex pump will be working like this i have one piston uh, okay i will make horizontal again that is better i have one plunger 
uh, and cylinder okay and I have another plunger and cylinder okay this is plunger and cylinder is here okay and this one i have v1 v2 v3 v4 okay now i have one shaft shaft is uh, having like this mm. shaft will have uh, like this okay okay mm, okay now motor is here there will be bearing there also must be bearing okay so it will be like uh, this type of shape and if you rotate continuously it will be creating rotation okay now rotate it okay the give torque this is motor and this is piston rod this is called crank okay this is called crank single metallic equipment and this is piston this is cylinder this is valve okay now uh, if you give rotation you can see this piston will be moving one by one when one is the bottom dead center another will be the top dead center okay so two piston one is moving up or one is moving left side another moving right side so continuously it will be moving in opposite direction so v1 v3 v3 v4 those valves will be operating accordingly and you will get pulse like this one so if uh, if cylinder c1 c2 if uh, if c1 is giving this much a pulse c2 will be giving this much a pulse so average will be like smooth almost smooth pulse now this is uh, duplex okay now in certain case if i i need more smooth power and more flow rate it is doubling your flow rate right because two cylinders are there instead of single cylinder uh, now i have triplex say triple throw or triplex how does it work it will have three cylinders okay so uh, drawing will be a little bit difficult i'll try to draw like this okay three cylinders so one cylinder will be like this another cylinder will be like this okay another will be uh, up then another will be another direction um, okay now piston okay piston rod is here okay so piston is here and piston is connected to piston rod and this is going up so it is here piston is here okay three dimensional picture i am trying to draw and piston is here similar way i will draw it is going down so piston will be here approximately moving up then moving down another piston is here okay so this piston also will be connected to this crank this section so piston will be um, moving up moving down and it will be in between somewhere okay so one two three pistons i have and i have one common shaft one crank okay and it's like this okay piston must be connected here piston is connected i will it is unnecessary lines okay it look better ah. 
my piston also getting vanished okay my piston so i should not draw like this okay now you see three pistons three pistons in different planes actually this uh, crank th there will be motor okay motor is connected now i can draw five piston engine also so this three piston will be creating 90 degree uh, uh, 120 degree angle so if piston if i see from side if one piston is here another piston will be here another piston will be here okay uh, this is connecting rod one is going up another is will be 45 degree angle uh, not 45 120 degree angle okay then piston going up another will be going uh, another angle so uh, here you can see 120 degree 120 degree 120 120 right so shaft is here one when one is going vertical another piston uh, crank will be 40 uh, 120 degree from this vertical piston and another will be vertical piston this side so one of the crank will be like this another crank will be like this and piston is going up piston going up piston going up okay so all piston will not be delivering together so my pressure pulse will be like this one piston is doing this okay another piston is doing this okay another piston is doing this okay so i got more smoother pass now if i have less of five pistons so what will do five divided by 360 okay 360 divided by five so uh, 70 uh, 5 degree right 75 degree means one pulse one pulse one piston is giving another piston will be giving pulse like this another piston will be giving pulse like another piston like this so we'll give almost smooth pulse okay so if you are increasing number of uh, pistons then your storage tank of fluid will have smooth pump uh, smooth uh, pressure okay but still if you have any pulse then we have to use a pulsation dampener okay because your storage tank piping system if you are giving if you are giving that pulsed flow so they will get alternating stress okay when they are getting alternating stress what will happen uh, their life will be reducing because of fatigue i already discussed fatigue loading right so fatigue loading will reduce your life so to avoid fatigue loading you use one pulsation dampener okay use pulsation dampener what a pulsation dampener will do i'll explain later but if you are using multiple cylinder you are reducing actually pulses your uh, this triplex or quintuplex those sort of arrangement if you go through ic engine multi cylinder engine similar way they also arrange multi cylinder engine to get uh, to reduce pressure pulses okay uh, diaphragm pump so uh, we have seen simplex duplex triplex and diaphragm pump what is diaphragm pump diaphragm pump like if you have certain chemical and leakage will be one issue or you want to develop a leakage free system so in that case you can use diaphragm pump okay so how diaphragm pump works diaphragm pump will be like this i have one piston maybe uh, a cylinder and i have piston here and you give reciprocating motion to this piston and this will be softer material like uh, any expandable material which can expand uh, and contract okay and you have let's say valve one v1 v2 okay uh, in piston cylinder arrangement what you did one piston you had and piston was sliding piston was sliding inside cylinder right and you had two valves v1 uh, v2 but in diaphragm pump also you have two cylinder uh, two valves v1 v2 and you give uh, continuous vertical let's say motion like this okay and the piston uh, the diaphragm will make sometime like this sometime like this then diaphragm will go down again going up going down so what is happening because of this reciprocating motion your valve will be opening and closing and you'll be delivering fluid okay so in that case your leakage is almost 
leakage is not there if diaphragm leakage is there that is a different issue otherwise there is no leakage actually uh, but in uh, piston pump what happened uh, your piston is sliding inside your cylinder so sliding is there will be certain amount of leakage so normally we use like 95 percent 98 percent uh, volumetric efficiency but in this case 100 percent volumetric efficiency is there 100 percent okay and uh, but in this case volume eta volume uh, 100 percent volumetric efficiency or eta volume eta volume uh, will be less than 100 percent okay because there every time there will be certain amount of leakage if very high pressure is there high leakage is there but pressure is lower the leakage will be lower if you remember the formula we discussed uh, for sucker or pumping applications q leakage flow rate q leakage flow rate will be proportional to your uh, viscosity viscosity increase this will be reduced right and your leakage i think dcq if leakage is in increasing your flow rate leakage flow rate will be increasing okay uh, but in diaphragm pump there is no such thing there is no uh, clearance anywhere okay so you are getting 100 percent flow rate but life uh, and amount of pressure you can develop that that gives a limit life means like your diaphragm continuously getting uh, alternating stress right going up and down so because of up and down its life it will get fatigue so after a certain time it can get leakage also so that will be one limitation many cases people use gear or screw pump okay single screw pump we already discussed can you remember that is pcp single screw pump pump pcp we already discussed okay progressive cavity pump but uh, if you have multiple screw pump that is also possible but that takes larger size for example two shaft will be there and shaft one screw will be here okay another screw will be here uh, so two screw matching a uh, certain way so that will create double screw you can create triple screw also okay so multiple screw also possible uh, PCP multiple screw it will, it will uh, require higher larger number uh, larger amount of space so that is one limitation of use for using as artificial heat but for surface surface application you can use uh, multiple screw pump okay another is gear pump gear you can see this uh, two gears are there okay so gears one gear is like this okay uh, so another gear also will be there so two gears when they are meshing uh, in certain way so they will be delivering fluid this is called gear pump both are positive displacement pump uh, positive okay uh, they they can compress air or gas and they can use for pumping fluid also but uh, and their speed also higher than pcp normally uh, several hundred uh, rpm possible for both cases uh, gear pump there will be external gear pump and internal gear pump this uh, animation shows this external gear pump but there might be some internal gear pump also like uh, there will be gear teeth inside and there will be certain gear uh, rotating inside so that also will be delivering certain fluid that is called internal gear pump and uh, one more example for single screw pump is the archimedes screw okay from long back uh, people were used to deliver fluid using archimedes screw if you google it you will find lots of pictures and videos also agriculture application for Arti Arti uh, archimedes screw but we do not use for uh, your oil and gas industry application so i am not discussing that uh, for metering and pumping application uh, you can use positive displacement pump or some other type pump uh, some piston pump piston pump piston pump because your uh, total volume delivered per stroke per uh, stroke will be limited right so fixed volume we are del delivering so pi by 4 d square l n right so this much of volume you are delivering uh, per rpm uh, if, if you know the rpm uh, if you think like one stroke then n equal one uh, anyway uh, so in that case you are delivering uh, pi d square by, uh, pi d square into l so total volume of the cylinder okay so that can be used as a metering pump uh, another is that diaphragm pump also can use a certain amount of fluid you take you deliver okay uh, 
another is that peristolic pump peristolic pump is like this you have a liquid thing okay one rod is here so rod will be squeezing the pipe okay this this is also fixed amount of fluid it will be delivering this is called peristolic pump peristolic p e r i s t a l l i c i think uh, pump okay uh, you can use diaphragm uh, diaphragm pump uh, to avoid leakage we use diaphragm pump but P, uh, i already told that uh, piston pump or reciprocating pump there should be uh, there may be certain amount of leakage gear pump also can be used for your metering applications and uh, api 675 api 675 this is specified metering pump uh, design criteria um, metering pump related information api a document it gives uh, i already told this uh, reciprocating pump or diaphragm pump or those are having reciprocating motion they will have pulsed flow okay so pulsed flow means if uh, you have one pump i have one outlet pipe okay so pipe will get pulse like this pressure okay p high p high so they will be like our uh, like our body our heart also pumping pulse flow right that's why uh, these days uh, thermometers are there previously doctor uh, or rural area doctor they will be checking your pulse here they will be pressure pressurizing this one they will get beeps okay so number of pulse if it is increasing that means there is fever in body they will be guessing okay so that is good for our body there's no issue but in our industrial application if i have pulse then your piping system will get fitting and you cannot pump that same fluid to you for your uh, subsurface application such as uh, hydraulic jet pump so you have to use one pulsation dampener okay so how to reduce these pulses instead of this pulse uh, so we have to give almost smooth pressure okay to your uh, application downstream systems so how this pulsation pulsation dampener works it will have one high pressure area high pressure dome uh, high high pressure air or nitrogen actually and you have one pipe okay so you give pulsed flow here inlet pipe you give pulse flow and outlet it will get lower pulse okay what, what is happening when you give pulsed flow this air pressure this will create cushion okay this chamber or uh, high pressure uh, gas this will create cushion so the peak pulses will be absorbed when low pressure is there so that time it will be expanding little bit you say very high pressure you give so that pulse uh, the section will be compressed again when pressure is down okay so then again it will be expanding but your outflow pressure will be almost fixed okay and if you get very good pulsation dampening so in that case you have to create a very big, big pulsation dampener so that all the pulses will be absorbed and fixed amount of fluid with fixed uh, pressure it will deliver but for normal application certain small amount of pulse is okay because anyway fluid is having little bit compressibility and whenever it is flowing through long pipeline so that small small pulses will be gone but very big pulses will be absorbed using pulsation dampener so pulsation dampener uh, it is having some other use also for example surge control or uh, fluid uh, hammering fluid hammering i think you are knowing first time fluid hammer fluid hammer what is happening let's say i have long pipe okay and i am delivering fluid i am delivering fluid so uh, now i have one valve also or i have one pumping system now stop suddenly so if you suddenly stop what will happen the whole column of fluid uh, will be giving because of momentum it will be giving big jerk to this whole piping system so because of this jerk there will be vibration and breakage and bust also possible okay so because a big pulse will come so that to avoid the pulse let's say put on fluid dampening system so whatever pulse extra pulse will be coming so that will be absorbed by your dampener system 
okay so that will save your system so that's called fluid hammer dampening system okay or any uh, if you want to avoid dampening fluid hammering system then you can use a pulsation dampener pulsation dampener or maybe bypass valve if pressure pulse suddenly coming so one bypass valve will be opening and it will be reducing pressure so that whole system will be safe no bursting or no breaking or no vibration will be there or no noise will be there 